back in 2022, Elon Musk said that the Cybertruck would be waterproof enough to serve briefly as a boat that could cross rivers, lakes, and even seas, as long as they weren't too choppy. Quick update on some features that I wasn't aware of that the Cybertruck had, and you might not be too. I kind of like these features because, as you guys know, I love the Cybertruck, and yeah, I can't wait until they are sold in Australia. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you've had an amazing weekend. Here in Australia, it was, it was about 41 degrees Celsius today. But then I had a friend in America who told me it's been 45 degrees where he lives for about three months straight. I don't know whether or not to believe him, but that's what he said. Could be true. If that's true, mate, that's hot. Anyway, the Tesla Cybertruck has some interesting modes that I didn't know about. I mean, driving modes. Elon Musk's claims of the Cybertruck temporarily serving as a boat may be true. Um, well, BYD say that their electric SUV, which costs uh, actually significantly more than the Cybertruck, it starts at $145,000 US dollars and it's smaller than a Cybertruck. They say it, it can uh, drive through water and they even have a video of it driving through the water. So clearly they weren't lying. That said, as a plug-in hybrid, there's no way in hell I'd be driving that thing through water. They have a propensity for catching fire, and I'm not making that up. However, the Cybertruck apparently has a weighed mode. Now, weighed might mean put the air suspension in the highest position and hope you make it to the other side, or it might mean swim. I don't actually know. But anyway, there is a weighed mode. There's also a Baja mode and an Overland mode. And... You know, when you look at that Cybertruck UI, you know, you look at the screen, look at all the, the stuff there, it looks so detailed. Detail and being able to, in my car, everything's really simple because there's jack all features. I mean, there's, there's nothing to do. <laughs> there's no adjustable suspension, right? There's not much to change. But the Cybertruck has an incredible amount of customization. But I think that's why you want to mode. It's so easy. It's so much easier to just press mode. What am I doing? I'm driving in the sand dunes. All right, Baja mode. What am I doing? Okay, I'm driving across the Pacific Ocean. Okay, I go wade mode. Uh, I don't think you'd wade across the Pacific Ocean, but anyway, you get my point, right? Or well, what about, what are you doing today? Um, I'm driving overland. So, you know, off-road, mud, rocks, etc. I'll pick the overland mode. And to be honest, the Cybertruck has more adjustable suspension height than any other vehicle that I know of, the standard. I'm sure you can modify your car and spend 20 grand and get some sort of special suspension. That's even more than the Cybertruck. But standard, I don't know of any vehicle that has as much air suspension adjustability and to be honest, customization of its vehicle's electric motors in combination with things like suspension damping, etc. than the Cybertruck. And so I think Wade Baja and Overland mode will actually add a lot of value. That said, it is heavy. It's 3.1 tons. But to be fair, there's, there's EVs that are nearly, that are in fact nearly that heavy that are significantly smaller. Uh, for example, like I said, BOD's electric SUV is heavier than that. It's only 5.1 meters long, whereas the Cybertruck is 5.7 meters long and it's made of stainless steel. Anyway, just a week after the official launch of the Cybertruck, images were posted on social media platform X highlighting a feature in the Cybertruck's infotainment system called Wade Mode. Raises ride height and pressurizes battery when driving through water, said Wade Mode information blurb. So raises ride height and pressurizes battery when driving through water. That's quite interesting. That would suggest to me that the vehicle is trying to actually float across a river. Potentially, why else would you pressurize the battery? Maybe. Anyway, if you've got any thoughts on that, or you're an engineer, a real engineer, not an internet engineer, let me know in the comments. In the off-roading scene, water crossings, of course, are common. So some off-roaders like the Jeep Wrangler have can cross water as deep as 34 inches. That's 86 centimeters. In fact, when I read car reviews, I often read what's the wading depth on vehicles. It's not very high. It's generally about maximum 80 centimeters. Yeah, so, you know, 32, around, around 32 inches. It's not much. However, Elon Musk has said that the Cybertruck will be waterproof enough to serve briefly as a boat. So in theory, it should be able to have significantly more depth crossing 
Now, there has been a few Teslas that have had problems with water getting into the cars. Older ones, it has happened. But that said, most of the time when that's happened, it's been from flooding, cars just floating in rivers, or it's been from people who intentionally drive their cars through rivers in Teslas. It's a game people play. There's certain streets in different countries around the world where people say that's the Tesla spot. You've got to drive through that river. So when it will flood, um, certain roads will flood across the road and you can drive through that flood. And it's a bit of a fun game that Tesla owners play. And sometimes it doesn't work the way they hoped and they have an issue with the car. Sometimes. Anyhow, the whole concept of actually waiting is possible. I mean, in September of 2022, one Tesla Model X owner was able to escape flooding caused by Hurricane Ian, alongside others doing the same on airboats. So people were in boats paddling around. There was a Tesla Model X driver driving his Tesla Model X as a boat. His Model X um, didn't escape entirely unscathed, though. He lost the rear bumper um, and apparently a bit of water went into the car. Now, not the engineering of the car, but into the uh, into the, like the footwell area. So that could potentially be an issue. You need to make sure that the seals on your doors were really good. Or then again, there's not much carpet in the Cybertruck. So who cares if a bit of water gets in? Probably doesn't, probably doesn't mean the end of the world. Now that said, I'd be curious. I'm really, I really want to see some guy, some YouTuber or whoever, someone doing a review, driving a Cybertruck through a river. I mean, through some, an area where it's the, clearly the water is much deeper than the, the vehicle. This would be awesome because if it can in fact do this, and I suspect it can, it would be a huge advantage for SUV guys who love overlanding. If you love overlanding, if you're right into getting off road, then it's a big disadvantage to have an internal combustion engine vehicle. It's a massive, massive ordeal to get your internal combustion engine vehicle across a river if it's more than a meter deep. You know, snorkels can help, but get to two meters deep, it's almost impossible. With an EV though, that might all change in the future. Thanks for watching.